Thank you, Dean Saxenian, for the opportunity to address this year's graduating class. First, I'd like to echo the many congratulations you've heard today. You all have, completed a, have just completed a demanding course of study at one of the nation's leading information schools, and I want to acknowledge your diligence, your perseverance, and your resilience. You've undoubtedly made sacrifices. You've dedicated days and nights and weekends to your academics. Perhaps you juggled school alongside a full-time job or completed your coursework while you were starting a family. And now at the end of your studies here, you're likely experiencing a mix of relief, elation, wonder, and apprehension. But in addition to all that, I hope you also have a keen sense of accomplishment. I've been speaking at a handful of commencement ceremonies this spring, and one of the things that's been on my mind as I watch students graduate is the privilege and responsibility that comes with obtaining a Berkeley degree. I have now no doubt that you, armed with your masters and doctorates from our information school, are apt to thrive in the information age. You've learned how to build and interpret statistical models, how to think critically about data, how to use Python and TensorFlow and Spark, and all sorts of other tools of your trade. You're at the forefront of how people interact with information and technology, and information and technology are embedded in so, so much of the modern human experience. You're in high demand by startups, established companies, universities, think tanks, and governments. In short, through your experience and your studies, you've gained great power. And in a bit of wisdom that has been attributed sometimes to Voltaire and sometimes to Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Given your skills, knowledge, and credentials, you will be put in positions of leadership that will have you shaping the relationship between humans and information in society. And you will need to draw on everything you've learned and experienced for as we've seen over the last few years, this relationship is critical, contentious, and constantly changing. How can we reinvent democratic decision-making in a world of pervasive connectivity and technologically enabled concentration of power and wealth? What kind of privacy are we owed in digital environments? How should we form, train, raise, and deploy intelligent systems? How will assistive technologies, cognitive technologies, and other human-machine interfaces alter our lives and our very humanity? The iSchool's human-centric approach to information and data science education has, I think, made you the kind of leaders we need to take on these questions. And I know you're up to the task because you already have. Just looking through some of your capstone final projects shows your careful attention to issues that matter. You looked at using natural language processing to stop hospital billing errors. You built a communication assistant for people with speech disorders. You examined the impact of polling place closures on voter turnout. You created a system to detect rumors spreading on Twitter. You developed a tool to help police deploy resources effectively and without discrimination bias. You built systems to improve the enrollment process of public schools in the Bay Area. I could go on and on. This kind of creative, thoughtful problem solving, infused with an understanding of people's needs and attentive uh, attention to issues of justice and equality, is exactly what you will need to solve the great intractable problems of our time. In 1966, Robert Kennedy gave a speech at the Greek theater here in Berkeley, and I'll quote his words. All of us have the right to dissipate our energies and our talents in any way that we wish. But those who are serious about the future have the obligation to direct their energies and their talents toward concrete objectives consistent with the ideals that they profess. In your hands, not with presidents or other leaders, is the future of your world and the best fulfillment of the qualities of your own spirit. 
Thank you. And now in the few minutes I have left, I also want to take this opportunity to thank a person who has been so pivotal in the life of the School of Information for much of its 24-year history, and that person is your dean, Anna Saxenian. As you likely know, Anna will step down this summer and return to her faculty position after having served as the leader of the iSchool for three terms, or a decade and a half. It would be difficult to overstate the influence that she's had in her time here. Upon taking up the deanship, she led efforts to refocus the school and its academics, as well as give it a new name and a new mission. She then led the school through a period of remarkable growth, more than doubling the size of its faculty and establishing its first faculty chair, doubling the size of its PhD program, and introducing an array of fellowships to support graduate students. She spearheaded the creation of two professional online master's programs, MIDS and the Master of Information and Cybersecurity, which have allowed the school to expand its reach and impact tremendously. While there were fewer than 100 students enrolled when Anno began her tenure, today the school enrolls more than 700 across its programs. In addition to this growth, Anno also helped establish the iSchool's two interdisciplinary research centers, the Center for Long-Term Cybersecurity and the Center for Technology, Society, and Policy. She launched the annual Data Edge Conference, which draws leading scholars and data science professionals to campus to assess the implications of the data revolution on every aspect of our lives. Beyond all this, Anno has been an incredibly important role model as one of the first women deans on the UC Berkeley campus and has led an array of iSchool initiatives that aim to increase the number of students from background and faculty from backgrounds historically underrepresented in tech. Her success has been tremendous. This coming fall, half of iSchool PhD students will be women. MIMS enrolls more than 50% women and has done so since this past fall. MIDS has gone from 20% women to 30% in four years. And women comprise 38% of the iSchool faculty, a fair amount higher than the campus at so 31%. Anno's leadership, as well as her counsel and wisdom and friendship, will be sorely missed. I'm grateful that we'll we will continue to have her on campus as a faculty member of the I as a faculty member as the iSchool enters its latest chapter as part of the D Division of Data Science and Information. Congratulations to all our graduates. Please join me in extending my deep gratitude to Anno for all that she has done for our campus and for shepherding the iSchool into an exciting new era. <laughs>